This is DNA. It's found in every cell. And that DNA are these stretches of chemical molecules with um, what we call nucleotides, A, T, C, and G. And that DNA has the information for how that cell functions, what type of cell it is, who it likes to hang out with, and, and how they coordinate to make tissues in your body. And between humans, that DNA is also over 99.99% identical. So we're all very, very similar to each other. We're almost clones, except in little bits of DNA here and there. Those little changes are what distinguish me from you. But what happens if something goes wrong with the cell's DNA? Mutations disrupt the function of that DNA. What happens is you have this string of codes. Let's say you have a paragraph like a word, and that's a, a code. You literally get it like a, a misspelling in the word. And that means now you can't interpret it properly. Some people with certain diseases or immune disorders are born with random mutations in their genes that keep their cells from behaving properly. So far, not much has been done to help these people. But now, David Truong's lab at New York University is developing new gene therapy techniques to fix this problem at its root. Gene editing allows you to go straight to that exact spot, DNA, and then correct it. So basically spell check change it back to the right letter, right? Uh, the kind of technology we work on is what we call genome writing. So instead of looking at one word, we look at a whole page or even two pages. And then we basically change everything on the page to say a new story. Current gene therapies rely on patients waiting for donors that match both their age and immune system. It could take years. But the Truong Labs methods, fixing really big sections all at once to create a universal cell, could be a game changer. If done right, their treatment could go straight from freezer to patient. Right now we're just looking to change this one segment that's important for making sure that these cells can be used for cell therapy. That segment is HLA, found on chromosome 6. HLA regulates the immune system and is the make-or-break region that affects cell therapy success. So how do you even do large-scale gene editing? We start on the computer. We have to basically design what we're making. Um, so we have a program that allows us to kind of visualize the DNA bases and the constructs that we're making and it makes it a lot easier to design order whatever primers we need or dna fragments once we have everything together and measure the amount of each of our dna fragments then we can assemble that together using yeast assembly and then we'll have to check that the right assembly was made in the yeast and then once we can confirm that it was correct using pcr then we'll grow the yeast take the dna out of the yeast and then put it into bacteria and then grow the bacteria, and that allows us to get a lot more of the DNA. And then we extract that, double check using sequencing if everything was assembled correctly. And then that sequencing is basically the final step. Afterwards, the lab inserts the newly assembled DNA into stem cells. Since they've targeted the HLA complex, the stem cells should replicate without triggering an immune system reaction that could reject the new DNA. Right now, the Truong Lab has worked with cell cultures. They plan to expand to mice cells and then to human trials. We um, fundamentally have gotten the genetic engineering part done pretty well, but now we're very focused on how do we make lots of different cell types. So once we have our universal cells, our approach for manufacturing lots of quantities of these cells that we're interested in, and then new programming, now we can come up with new therapeutics. Therapeutics that, ideally, will be much cheaper than typical cell therapies, which can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so once we get that programming in, now we can address what kinds of diseases we could before using cells themselves. So this is very much um, a dream of the field of cell engineering. <laughs>